Ladies and gentlemen, moving forward, our next panel discussion is going to be on performance and creativity, the digital stack, the evolution of digital media outputs from pure performance driver to performance plus branding. And to take the session forward, may I please invite Mr. Akshay Tapse, uh, Senior Vice President, Digital Marketing, AU Small Finance Bank, to join us on the screens. We also have Mr. Ravi Santhanam, CMO, Head, Corporate Communications and Liability Products and Managed Programs for HDFC Bank. Ms. Sadhana Daswani, Head Brand and Digital for JSW Paints. Mr. Shawneel Charles, Managing Director, India for Outbrain. And also this session will be chaired by Mr. Vinod Thadani, Chief Digital Officer, Media, Densu and CEO, iProspect to join us on the screens. And I would request Mr. Thadani to take this session forward and initiate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Shubha. Thank you, Shubha, for introducing us to the chain, to the panel. And I welcome all my co-panelists. Thank you so much, guys, for joining the Densu panel today. We'll immediately get on to the panel and the questions which we have framed for today. Getting in, I wanted to understand if I have to ask, uh, digital historically been seen as a media driving performance while traditional media, if you see, has always been driving the creative or so-called the branding. That's always been a kind of a, if you see from a marketeer's lens, uh, uh, the kind of uh, briefing or thought process which we've been seeing. So uh, before I jump into other creative led or digital stack led performance questions, I just wanted to open this to the forum today to understand what's your point of view uh, on this. Maybe Akshay, Ravi, uh, Sadhna. The question is to the marketeers and then Shonil, I'll come to you for a question which I have in mind for you. Anyone can go first and the rest <laughs> let me go first. Uh... So thanks, Vinod. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to share my thoughts here. I just look back 15 years back, what happened when digital came in. And at that time, the CMOs were all asked the question, you spend a lot of money, what is the impact of that? What is the impact of that? So when digital happened, suddenly something called as performance became easy for a marketeer. So you can actually measure the performance. So digital is not about performance marketing. Digital is about measuring the performance of any campaign. But the easiest thing to do was to show the performance in terms of a click leading to something called a website visit and whatever it is. And that's how it started. And the CMOs went running to the CFOs and said, hey, see, I can measure, so give me more money. And then if you look at various industries, CPG suddenly started looking at it and said, I can't even drive sales on this digital channel. So what do I do? Because I can't just keep, if it is a banking product, for example, where I work now, it's easy for me to say that here is a click coming to an application form. There is a account open, everything done. Sales can be attributed. But when it comes to CPG, the people in the CPG industry were thinking like, everybody talks about digital. If I don't do anything in digital, what happens to me? So I also have to adopt digital. And good, they adopted digital because they couldn't do anything on the performance side. And slowly, digital as a medium for creative also started. I think the agency side was a little bit slow in my view in terms of seeing digital as a brand building medium because of the fact that it was more about performance and the other stuff which was attributable, measurable, which was easily available. And the platforms also did not have a clear performance metric for the brand campaigns so or the creative work that you can do on a digital. So I think that came later compared to the early performance measurements on nothing. And I think it's an industry evolution. Today, I don't think the right marketeers use only for performance marketing. If they are still doing it, it's more because of the fact that they do not understand how to measure the brand metrics on a digital campaign. And once they have the technology and the tools in place, I'm sure everybody will go towards the full funnel marketing on digital. Akshay, would you like to add on to what Ravi said uh, on this point? Sure, Vinod. First of all, thanks. Thanks for inviting me to this forum. Uh, I think I completely agree with Ravi in terms of uh, digital being a, a, a performance measuring uh, platform uh, or a channel and that's the and sometimes it actually gets a uh, curse also for a lot of digital marketers because they are asked too many questions which atl guys pass through quite easily but uh, i think uh, I, so we have been obviously uh, at a u bank we have been running a, 
an overall 360 degree campaign for the year this year. Uh, quite lucky to be leading that uh, at the digital front. And uh, I think we have completely blurred out the lines between a mainline slash ETL, or whatever you call it, and a digital, because technically uh, a user who is, uh, see, watching a TV will also obviously watch uh, his, his or her phone, will also surf on internet, will also be maybe looking at YouTube videos, will also be hearing to radio and stuff like that. I think uh, that blurring has already happened. In fact, uh, uh, our recent brand track report uh, also helped us in understanding that uh, digital has been the second most highest impact uh, driving channel for us in between our media mix, which we have been able to create, uh, primarily because uh, maybe because of the higher frequency, because of the uh, relevancy or the targeting. I think uh, people do recall uh, the ads when they see it maybe 10, 15 times over a period of a couple of months or so, which probably on a mass media, it becomes difficult to achieve that kind of frequency for one, one sort of a person. So I think, uh, yes, uh, digital has been, or I think I believe most of the marketers will be using it for branding now, nowadays. But yeah, performance, I think from BFSI sector, uh, I think BFSI also was one of the leading sector to drive performance on digital channels for a good period of time. And, uh, but yeah, I think BFSI has also started learning how to do branding on the channel. Sadhna, any inputs from you on this? Yeah, so um, thanks, thanks. First of all, thanks uh, Vinod for inviting. Uh, and good evening, everyone. Uh, let me just slightly go back to, uh, you know, before the performance marketing yes, era, right? Uh, we, we all of us as a, as a marketers, because we've seen the non-digital and a digital era, uh, we've initially started that, you know, any campaign that I could do where I could get uh, millions of impressions. And then a uh, lot of us started questioning impressions se hota kya hai. And then to an era where uh, we started doing performance and performance also was purely, uh, you know, doing lead generation. And there also we started, uh, you know, questioning, are these leads good enough? Are we getting, you know, enough and more conversion? Or can we use this money and do something, you know, on ground? I think today... Uh, in last couple of years and thanks i shouldn't say thanks to pandemic but i think the in terms of thought process it's really accelerated our uh, how we look at digital earlier we used to say digital karna hai today we say what all things we can do in digital uh, if one of the reports that i was reading you know it said that 8 out of 10 people are spending you know time online and where are they spending time on right social media is one of the things but they have gone beyond social media today you have ott today you have gaming platform we are back we are doing banking online we are you know people are playing games online so there is enough and more available online so i think the question really for you know us as a marketeers i think how we can really create a connection between what all things we do so i would like to really say that how do we create a connection in a very disconnected uh, led kind of uh, you know communication and marketing uh, i think if we manage to do that there is there is a very different way and an angle of looking into uh, digital that's what i think Sure. Actually, uh, that brings me on. Uh, if uh, the the earlier panel, uh, there was one of the panelists, which was Prasad. Uh, uh, he actually spoke about that uh, as as a BFSI as a category. We generally talk about bottom of the funnel, and we straight away talk about. And Ravi spoke about the same thing that BFSI as a category. We were always talking about leads, but uh, you know, uh, upper funnel is equally important. Uh, hence, I wanted to understand uh, uh, when we talk about a consumer journey, <clears throat> and in a consumer journey, it's there is no upper funnel and bottom of the funnel, right? It's a consumer journey. And and in one of the clients, uh, maybe last week itself, when we were talking about and we were uh, in the in the in the boardroom, and he made a very important point, which I wanted to discuss and wanted to take your views on. Uh, is there, uh, people were saying there is difference in branding, there is difference in performance. Some people say there's a very thin line. The question to ask is from a marketeer's perspective, at the end of the day, I think what you'll actually want is growth. It's, it's the one thing KPI, right? Whether it's uh, awareness building and hence brand track, uh, whether that awareness building leads to consideration 
uh, and hence it leads to uh, you know people interested to your product in our case could be leads and then conversion uh, hence do you understand and do you agree that in today's world uh, there wouldn't be any such things which says there is only a lead gen or there is a uh, there is only a brand it's a it's a brief which comes which says i need growth can you please articulate how the entire uh, strat or solution or a plan would look like would it be uh, would it be right to understand that or uh, is there something which goes into your mind while putting a, a brief to the client you know i'll answer it in two different ways i think the first is obviously what you said is right all of us are interested in finally at the end of the day growth and this is an artificial divide this performance marketing and brand marketing are all artificial divides for me i'll put it simply to my entire team saying performance marketing is for today's customers brand marketing is for tomorrow's customers because not everybody is going to buy our product not everybody is going to buy or paint their house every day so when sadhna is going to do something about paints she has to just make sure that whenever the context arises for painting which is a going to be a very involved decision how do i make sure the consumer experience what painting could be how can i make it a measurable pleasurable affair for similarly for a person to take a loan for painting that house that thought is going to happen only when they decide to paint the house it's an involved decision so how do you engage over a period of time and that's brand marketing for me channels media the kind of creatives that you use depends on the purpose for the campaign that is being built so this artificial divide between performance marketing brand marketing is all in our minds the brief for me is very clear are we talking only to today's customers what about tomorrow if you are going to talk to tomorrow's customers only tomorrow why would they even consider you so if you are going to be in this kind of a relationship it is extremely transactional how are you going to build long term value so the long term value is built only if there is an emotional connect with your consumer over a long period of time if it is purely transactional relationship uh, you don't get anything out of that apart from that one maybe a trial that people would have done so in my view this is slightly illogical to talk about it performance is for today brand is for tomorrow's customers and you have to talk to both no thank you ravi i think uh, you brought up a very good uh, point to the today and and the tomorrow to to take care of it from a marketer's lens uh, akshay sadhna before i jump to another question for um i let me just add something ravi made a very interesting point that uh, you know i mean uh, this is something that uh, uh, you know it's it's you know i've been asked a lot of times that uh, you know why do you want to do a lead generation for a for a paint customer right because it's not like today i'm thinking of painting my house and tomorrow i will decide i have to go and you know paint my home it's not like that i think what is important is that really uh, how do we really keep engaging with that existing or a potential customer and we look at at uh, various and multiple interventions uh, i think there's a very thin line difference between pele i will do just the awareness and then i will develop interest that ida model i think has we have grown beyond that so we look at you know at a various uh, juncture of 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 the brand funnel how do we keep and constantly building engagement with my customer whether it's a existing customer or it's a potential customer i think that is the key to uh, key for any marketer if i had to add minute to this i think uh... Just to substantiate Ravi's and uh, Ravi's point and Sadhna's views, uh, patience will also be a key because when you're looking for a future sort of a customer, uh, you never know for when that moment is actually going to come when he or she is going to start believing or start thinking about a category or a product of yours. Now that can only be bridged with a, a strong attribution model, uh, where you are able to track some level of understanding of how that, if you call it brand marketing. that spend of brand marketing has helped overall somewhere down the line to help your mid funnel and bottom funnel right now that attribution model can also help a lot of cfos and ceos to have the patience about hey you know what okay right now just hold on things are happening and you're seeing that ripple down effects going on so i think uh, if you have that stitched in uh, pretty well uh, then absolutely there is no there is no difference between a brand and a performance sort of marketing so sure, thanks i'll i'll uh, now jump on to <coughs> sorry shonil yep 
Uh, you've been across uh, and, and working across clients, across uh, categories uh, uh, in your uh, current uh, role. I just wanted to pick your brains on what are the lessons uh, from brands who have gotten creative and branding uh, successes in digital media? Some of the case studies or some of the work which you've seen when you're interacting with agencies or brands, if you may, you know, let us know about these things. Oh, that's fantastic to be here. Thanks. Great uh, event. Fantastic panel. You and me have been, you know, uh, founding this digital street for a long time. It's nice to see, you know, this digital is now front and center for everyone. And, uh, you know, uh, illustrious CMOs are on digital panels earlier, five, 10 years back, they would skip the panel because it's just, you know, 5% of their efforts and budget. So it's good to be here. And, uh, you know, talking more about, uh, uh, you know, creativity and, uh, you know, branding and where sort of the intermesh is happening in digital. I've been at this for a long time now, I think about 10, 12 years. I think we're reaching a stage where we are seeing a lot of action in this space. You know, earlier, uh, like uh, Ravi mentioned, there was a clear demarcation. You know, we would we would get briefs which were just performance oriented. And, you know, the platforms and the publisher ecosystem and the media side of it was just out to deliver performance. Uh, I don't blame the, you know, the marketeers or the creative folks because, the medium was too new. The good parts of it was I was offering, you know, great data and insights and ROI and, you know, measurability. But, uh, you know, it was all about banners, how much creative, how creative can you get on a banner? Okay, it, you know, we, we've all, we still do use them, but, you know, it's just something which uh, uh, doesn't lend itself to too much creativity. Then the form factor, this, the, the real estate shrank when India moved to mobile. So, you know, that was, the, that was one, another hurdle in the way. The internet was mostly in English. So, you know, you even though you wanted to address India, which is so vernacularly diverse, you sort of had to think in digital. You would only think in English. You know, I have to make my landing page and banner in my communication. So these were some of the limiting factors. I'm happy to say that, you know, we've crossed most of that hurt, that those hurdles. I think at least 70, 80% of it is done. And uh, we're seeing fantastic case studies here to... to to highlight, uh, you know, what your question to me was, I think, uh, you know, there are some clear winners, you know, from the platform I represent, which is Outbrain, where we deliver, you know, native content recommendations and native advertising solutions for advertisers. We are seeing some fantastic growth stories emerging from uh, EduTech, FinTech, uh, Ecom, Crypto. Uh, you know, these are, uh, you know, the, the categories which, uh, are really you know changing the game and because uh, the platform which sort of outbrain represents you have to make a little effort towards your it's not just a static banner you know you have to create some content where you're driving the, the audience to so we're saying everyone's making a, a significant effort now in content and the guys who are doing the right kind of content marketing meshed with native advertising that's probably more about what I'm going to talk about, you know, as we continue as the best solution for all this is um, uh, we're seeing some fantastic uh, case studies and, you know, developments in that space. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Akshay, uh, you mentioned in your first point where you talked about that you've done uh, and are looking at a full funnel. So hence, uh, could you let us know about some kind of success stories which you've seen or doing across creative and branding uh, and what are the KPIs specifically put from a digital perspective? Sure. So, uh, you know, if I have to mention one of the case study, which we recently, uh, I mean, did with one of the other uh, largest OTT platform in the country right now, uh, what we did was we used uh, something which is not so common on ATL or the mainline side is moment marketing. Uh, what uh, so we created uh, festive based uh, content, a long format content. This wasn't the typical ads, which are like thirty second or sort of minutes. In fact, these are three minute plus videos which we created. Now people do believe that digital does not have a lot of uh, span of attention from people. People users may drop out after six seconds, five seconds, whatever their YouTube mantra is. Uh, but we used OTT platform uh, and. Uh, Interestingly, we actually received an, uh, a view through rate of about 77%. And that I'm talking about for a three minute plus sort of a video. Now, uh, 
that's that's great. I mean, if you ask me, uh, why would someone see an ad of three three minutes? Because it's not an ad technically, but the message is delivered. The entire philosophy the brand was wanted to wanted to share with the audience has been delivered with a long format content. I think seventy seven percent itself is like a two x of the platform's benchmark. But uh, I think the the reason why it blended so well was because we actually used the platform's uh, uh, USP of delivering GEC content uh, to a lot of audience, and we created the uh, the content, the, the long format content of our branded content in a way that it it gelled very well. It looked like a GEC, so people kind of were given that they were anyways in that mindset of seeing a GEC sort of a content. They were okay to see this for a three minute or also. And obviously, the message got delivered. I think these are a few of the branding exercises, and in fact, we got like a five point uh, jump on our brand lift studies uh, by Hotstar across recall and awareness. Uh, this was slightly later part of our uh, campaign, so uh, initially we got slightly higher on a few of the other platforms. But I think more importantly, what I would like to share is uh, these sort of experimentations are very uh, is are not possible on a few of the other channels. Uh, because uh, you don't get to see ever a three-minute ad, I'm sure, on a TV. Maybe a few of the US channels do play it, but uh, not in India, definitely. Uh, and those are the areas, I think, which we can deliver the message. The branding the branding ex- uh, objectives, as we were speaking, are also being uh, achieved uh, in a very, very different sort of a format. So I think this is something which I would like to share. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, from a full funnel standpoint, you know, uh, there are models which are created. Obviously, uh, we have seen various formats of content working in a very different way uh, in terms of uh, making people aware, consider as what Sadhana was saying, well, there is no AIDA model right now. But then uh, obviously we are seeing those uh, uh, differences of uh, users reacting to our content pre our campaign, brand campaign and a post brand campaign. So obviously that lifts have been very clear the the uh, the conversion rates have started improving because of our branding campaign. So those are obviously the direct attribution towards the brand uh, brand uh, I mean, spends which we have been doing on the platforms. So what I hear, Akshay, is uh, uh, making creatives as per platforms, and that is what has become uh, a success, which I could say. So if there are short formats, use it on those platforms. If you have a long format, use it on those platforms, because that's where you feel that the consumers are taking a note and hence you get great brand results. Like you mentioned, thank you, uh, Akshay for that. Uh, Ravi, uh, one thing, and this is a question which I genuinely wanted to understand from a, uh, uh, a senior marketer like you would be with media convergence taking place where digital will become the backbone. What are the strategies maybe adopted to drive creative and branding success on this platform? Um, <clears throat> first thing is uh, the mindset shift has to happen. You have to think digital first. Once you start thinking digital first, the entire work that we do on the creatives start keeping that platform in mind. If the mindset shift happens, because what I see today is many of our agency partners come first with a TV approach because you're talking about something big. So the first thing is TV and then trying to adopt that to the digital formats. I don't think that works. So the first is to shift the mindset to say, I will start digital first. And even inside digital, I will start mobile first. So that we understand very clearly because at the end of the day, while we do understand because we are a banking ecosystem player, so we do have a lot of first party data. So we do know a lot about customers, where they approach us and what they do with all of us. But still, if you want to reach to a larger audience, the mindset shift has to happen. And I think that's the core of all this stuff. After that, I think there are three things that we all need to look at. The first thing is, what is the approach? And the uh, when you're talking in this kind of a fashion, we all know that we have multiple customers and each of them are in different mindsets. So which customer you're going to talk about performance, which is about the bottom of the funnel, which customer about consideration, which customer about brand. So that you are talking about tomorrow's customers also. Because some of these tomorrow's customers, you don't want to pain them by starting talking about performance today. So when it comes to performance, is your creative talking about rational persuasion for doing it nudge to act Whereas when you're talking about brand, are you giving them a feel 
that you want to be associated with this brand? What is the feeling that you are generating in that creative? So you should be very clear about the consumer context and correspondingly make the creatives in that. The second thing I look for is the formats. The formats in the mobile world and in the various screens are very different. Are you doing a vertical shoot? Are you making sure that text is minimal? Are you making sure that it is as personalized as possible? Because digital gives you that ability to do that. In your creative thinking, like for example, I'll give you an example. We wanted to have a lady in marriage costume. Immediately, the first thing that we get to see is a North Indian. Now, how many of these people know the North Indian bride with full of mehendi and all those things will appeal to a South Indian audience or a Northeast audience? If you have your creative thinking like that, then do you have the ability to change that face based on the geography to mm-hmm. various other bride look is per the respective geography. So the formats and everything start to be coming to the next one. The third thing is about platform. You also need to make sure that you have multiple platforms, whether it is the video platform, whether it is the social media platform, whether it is the discovery platform, it it is anything else that you do or the OTT. How do you make sure that this creative will actually fit into those platforms? So once you have this shift in the mindset towards digital and then also mobile first, then you start looking at the approach, the format and the platforms. And if you have a checklist of how we want to do this, I think then everything comes out very easily because you can easily measure in every one of these platforms what is the actual success for the top of the funnel, what is the brand lift study that you can do, and at the bottom of the funnel, what is the lead generation, what is the conversion that also you can do. So you need to be very clear about the approach that you take. And if you have a very solid approach, I think most of these are very easy to do. Sure. Thank you, Ravi. Sadha, would you like to add on uh, to, to this point? Yeah, sure. Um, I think uh, um, most of the points Ravi mentioned, uh, just one point I would like to add, I I, I think it's important that uh, we also understand this whole art, because as a marketers, we love uh, perfecting the balance between art and science. Uh, There is a lot of data and there is a lot of learning that is available to us, whether it's to do with your brand health study, the inputs that come from there, or, you know, you, from your website traffic, from your social media. So there is a plethora of information available. So I think making sense of that and then leading that into a great brief or an input, I think will also give a good uh, kickstart to whatever you do. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, you know, one of the things that we assume that in a category like paints, a painter or a contractor will not be active on social media. Uh, when we went into the market and we realized that so many of these guys are active on Facebook and we did this whole initiative where they could share the work that they have done with us on social media and we started reposting and resharing that on our platform. So I think uh, uh, mindset have changed, the consumption pattern has changed and the data that is available with us, I think making sense of that, that goes into a right uh, briefing also plays a critical role. Thank you. I, I know I'm running late. Uh, I've already got a few messages from E4M, but uh, I would want to have uh, one more question. Uh, <clears throat> I, I just wanted to understand from Shonil, uh, has, brand, has digital been able to drive uh, creative and branding goals uh, across uh, if you have any experiences on any categories which you would like to highlight? So we know that it's getting there, you know, I would say on a scale of one to 10, uh, you know, the marriage of creativity and, you know, using digital platforms well is, you know, at a part of three or four on 10, hopefully we're on some panel in a, you know, in, in a year's time where this moves to about seven or eight, but I, I appreciate the efforts which are being put behind this. Also on the other side of the fence, you know, uh, for what the marketeers need, the platforms also have to bring sort of a menu card of solutions to them right you know what is a successful digital ad you know you know beyond the creative it has to showcase on premium inventory going back to where what akshay was talking about you know native content it it, the ad has to blend with content you know to make it very efficient like you know the case study example he gave so we have to deliver premium inventory to the advertisers we have to ensure that they are engaging ad formats they have to be multiple formats you know so that you know you can cover up a huge gamut of uh, different platforms 
there has to be rich targeting. It has to be very contextual. Brand safety is something which is very important for all these marketers. You know, it's you can't just run their ads. Just about a lot of the internet is fairly unsafe. So you know, you need tools and uh, methodologies to ensure that the, the brands are kept in a safe environment. And most importantly, uh, you know, again, going back to performance, the, everything has to have some outcomes which are, you know, based on measurement. So these are, uh, you know, some of the things that make up a successful digital ad. And just to give you a sense of, you know, traditional brands are taking a little longer. The bigger the companies, the bigger the brands, they are, their sort of journey to uh, success, uh, you know, on the creative side is, is, I am seeing a lot of smaller brands, you know, these are, you know, affiliate commerce companies, you know, they are, they are leveraging the platforms and the opportunities very efficiently. And off late, especially in the last six months, uh, you know, of the pandemic, and we're seeing a lot of uh, smaller brands sitting here in India, but buying media and inventory and advertising in international markets and selling it. We're seeing this in China, we're seeing this in India. And that's that I'm finding is a very interesting success story, because they are also being extremely creative with the way they are approaching each country, each market. And, you know, to go back to Ravi's point that, you know, they're absolutely thinking digital first. Actually, they, they don't have any, you know, offline uh, model at all. So I think, uh, you know, I would put that as uh, something. And, and for us, that's, you know, maybe 30, 40% of our overall uh, business, which we are seeing is now coming more from these younger, agile companies. And I think, the older brands and all can sort of look at them and pick up some, you know, uh, cues on you know how to how to get in this into this properly. No, I, I I'm just picking up this point uh, with Shonil Reyes. I think it's a good point. And anyone from the panel, and this would be the last question before uh, we sum. I'll sum it up. Uh, why do you feel that uh, the younger brands or so-called uh, the newer age brands or the D2C brands, however you put it? Uh, are being more uh, agile or take those risks which can be done on this medium versus the, uh, I won't say traditional brands, but uh, bigger brands uh, which have always used uh, these platforms. Uh, of course, they were traditional first. I also see many brands, even in FMCG now and in other categories, doing a lot much more digital than what it was. But why, why, why do you see these uh, brands being the first mover and experimenting those many things than the, uh, than the larger uh, brands? Because money is not a concern when it comes to larger traditional brands. Uh, in fact, D2C and other brands are startups and hence uh, they would think twice because they need to get it right. Why do you feel that these things are happening so fast? I think the answer lies in your question itself. And uh, see, for the traditional people, I've been used to certain things. It's a business answer, nothing to do with marketing. I also wear a business hat. For a traditional person, I've been doing something and it has been working. So to change is a big change. So I will only do small, small things to do it. For the new to brand guys, I think they are very clear in terms of a very small slice of a population they are going to target with their product. Nobody comes to the market like an HDFC bank saying that I'll try, I will go ahead and serve India. That doesn't happen. So for them, it is very clearly a problem of a consumer that I'm going to solve. And this consumer problem is only there with, say, one crore Indians or 50 lakh Indians. So TV is not the medium for them. So it's actually from a business perspective that it starts. And it's not about marketing. The same brands, once they reach a certain scale, they also come to TV. Whether it is an Amazon, <laughs> whether it is anybody else, they also come to the TV because once they take that kind of a leap and then they have to do something else, which is building a much bigger ecosystem for online commerce, Amazon is there in TV and you see all the e-commerce players. And you can ask the question, why is e-commerce anyway on TV? At the end of the day, they are using only a mobile phone to buy. So it's more of a business issue in terms of where you find your business and what is the consumer that you are targeting and where do you see that consumer going today? So you will obviously feel that that's happening that way. Otherwise, I think all of us are open and it's a question of the business context that makes you think like that. Sure. Thank you, Ravi. Any last, uh, uh, you know, remarks? Uh, Akshay, Sadna, Shonil uh, on this and then I'll quickly summar summarize. I know Shobha is 
up on the screen, which gives me a trigger that my time is up, <laughs> but I will not take more than two minutes. I promise. Yeah, Akshay. Just a quick one. I think uh, what we have still realized is even if we go very high on digital, I think uh, a front page uh, uh, leading daily ad uh, is something which uh, still creates that one day or maybe a half day impact. Uh, and probably that is because of the entry barrier also, because uh, yes, uh, you you can get onto a Facebook ad or a, or an OTT ad quite easily. You don't need that sort of an investment, but to get into a, that sort of a space on a, on a say a front page jacket ad, or maybe sponsoring a leading media property, sports media property. I think you need that sort of a backing of the currency or the dollars. And that shows to the world that, hey, you know what, I have a right. So yes, digital is still to go to that zone, is still to achieve that zone. But uh, yeah, I think it's a matter of time that we do that. I would just like to add uh, one last thing that I think it's more of a it's more of a mindset. It's uh, it's I think uh, you know in the coming years it will no longer be a TV versus digital. It's going to be okay. You know, let's do something which cuts across you know all the platforms. So I think it's more of a mindset uh, thing than. Uh, anything else and we'll see that shift happening very soon sure so my last, last last comment uh, and advice for everyone is you know think content i think you know that's possibly the thing that flies the furthest and has the mass maximum sort of uh, impact on any digital platform so my advice to all brands is you know consider content marketing native advertising that's probably the the biggest wave which is coming, which is going on right now and for the next couple of years to make the right impact. Sure, thank you. I'll just summarize certain things which I have learned today uh, from you guys. And I think Ravi said it uh, first very rightly that, uh, you know, personalized creative, depending on the geography, makes a lot of sense. Mindset shift, mobile first is what uh, Ravi, you said. And thank you for saying that. Uh, uh, Akshay made a point saying that uh, he has seen success when they have done platform-wise creatives and he's talked about his brand tracks going up. Uh, <coughs> Shonil talked about that we need to make sure that it's going to be contextual, uh, brand safe, great premium inventory and measurement to be the key. And uh, of course, Sadna talked about how the full funnel has gone are the days where we're talking IDA, but it's the consumer journey which we look at. So thank you very much, guys, uh, for uh, coming here and sharing your expertise. I learned a lot and it was great. Thank you very much. Over to you, Shubha. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Vinod. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much, everyone. Uh